Good evening. I'm Larry Jamison, Dean at the Perlman School of Medicine. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm delighted that we've got such a large audience that's interested in science and how science can inform our approaches to the coronavirus and ultimately translate some of that learning into the field of cancer. I, I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about the Penn Medicine approach to COVID-19 and I'll give you a few highlights of the fantastic Abramson Cancer Center. But first, I have a few thank yous. First, uh, Robert Vonderheide, the Cancer Center Director and his outstanding team for putting this program together. And second, all of you uh, for joining us. And third, I want to acknowledge our special guest, Tony Fauci. I was going to say that I knew Tony before he was famous, but then I realized that Tony has always been famous, even before COVID-19, where he's helped inform the public and provided clear thinking and guidelines. He helped us with swine flu, Ebola. And if you go back in time, he pioneered our approach to HIV AIDS. I'm privileged to work with him as an editor on Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine, and I'm grateful he can join us. You'll hear more about him later on. In March, Penn Medicine stood up a new center to study coronaviruses. Fortunately, we had a number of faculty with expertise in this area. And they've developed some very important advances that are helping us in this fight. Some of the basic science approaches to RNA vaccines and DNA vaccines. They set up a high throughput screening of drugs that are already FDA approved that might have activity against the coronavirus and clinical trials. On the clinical side, it was important that we decrease our activity early on in March and April so that we could spare PPE and so that we could make sure that we had a safe environment for our frontline healthcare workers and our patients. But I'm pleased to say that we've completely reworked our clinical work environment to create a safe, environment so that we can come back to full clinical activity. And this is really important because so many diseases, as you'll hear about tonight, don't wait for COVID to go away. We need to coexist with COVID-19. We need to take care of patients with other clinical needs, including cancer. The Abramson Cancer Center that you'll hear much about tonight has recently received a score of exceptional from the NCI. This is their highest score. It's the third time in a row when we've been reviewed that we've received that score. It speaks to the excellence of the clinical and research faculty. We've also, since 2017, had 10 FDA approved drugs and devices that are based on cancer problems. You know about the CART immunotherapy as one example, but others target specific kinds of of leukemia or create new approaches to medical imaging. And, and yet others are surgical, like TORS, transoral robotic surgery that create unique access for head and neck cancer. The Abramson Cancer Center isn't resting on its laurels. Despite these 10 FDA approvals, recently they've used gene editing using CRISPR-Cas9 to modify immune cells to help fight cancer. This is an incredible breakthrough and the first use of CRISPR-Cas9 in clinical trials in this country. A number of other aspects of the Cancer Center you'll be familiar with. The Vassar Center for BRCA is a center that goes from genetics and genetic counseling to clinical trials and clinical care. And very impressive is their outreach and communication to inform patients about the risks and treatment options. The Roberts Proton Center has the most advanced technology in the world, creating multimodal approaches to cancer. And lastly, I want to highlight our approach to disparities in healthcare and just note the fact that black patients have access to our cancer clinical trials at a percentage that is equal to or even higher than their percentage in our community. So this is a remarkable example of outreach and access to the advanced care at the Abramson Cancer Center. Lastly, I want to thank our donors 
who last year contributed $60 million to the Abramson Cancer Center, including support for the Basser Center and the Thalmeyer Cardio-Oncology Program. This enables our faculty to create, to move more quickly, and to fight cancer. It's now my privilege to introduce formally our incredible Cancer Center Director, Robert Vonderheide, who serves as the John Glick Director of the Abramson Cancer Center. Bob, I turn the video over to you. Well, thank you very much, Larry. And we so much appreciate your strong support of the Abramson Cancer Center. And we are all so grateful to be here tonight together with all of you, more than 3,700 registrations for this CME course, tuning in to learn about the critical issues of COVID-19 in our cancer patient population. As one of the oldest and largest NCI designated comprehensive cancer centers in this country, it is our pleasure to host you tonight. And I say that on behalf of myself and all the faculty co-directors. So the agenda tonight is power packed. And let me just give you a quick overview. We're gonna begin with an introduction from one of the faculty co-directors, Dr. Agarwal, followed by a keynote address from Dr. Anthony Fauci, whom Dr. Agarwal will introduce. After a Q&A with Dr. Fauci, we will then hear the results from a COVID-19 trial here at Penn, just reported and published today, which will be presented by the authors publicly for the first time. It's a randomized study of hydroxychloroquine. Five additional lectures on cancer and COVID will ensue, and then a very important case conference uh, and discussion will finish our program. We hope you have time to join us for the whole event, and we thank you for being here and for your participation.